Hi students, in this video we're going to discuss measurements, the different types of measurements that we'll do in lab or as scientists, but in general these are measurements you do in everyday life. <clears throat> and we're also going to discuss the difference between the imperial system, our system here in the United States, or the English system sometimes referred, versus the metric system. And again, it's really interesting because the imperial system, I think there's only one of three countries that still uses it, that doesn't use a metric system. And it's, it's interesting because we happen to be one of them. So, but what are some of the things that we typically measure? Well, length, right? We use rulers. Mass, we're very concerned with weight, right? Time, we could look at our watches because we're running very hectic with our daily lives. Volumes, how many cups of coffee did I need to drink this morning to get up? These are all measurements we do in daily life. I mean, when you look at your driver's license, what does it tell you? It tells you how many feet and inches you are, right? So if we look at a ruler, we know that if we look at one side of the ruler, it's measuring in inches, 12 inch ruler is a one foot ruler. If you've played maybe some football or, or you're just familiar that, you know, one yard is three feet. That's a lot bigger than it seems. It's a lot harder to push one yard to get that, you know, first down in. Or even more, and this is one that most people don't even know, um, but it's something that's really common. If you run marathons or if you're in your vehicle, it says miles per hour. Well, there's one mile and 5,280 feet. And this is not one that a lot of people even in the US know. When we look at mass, I'm gonna jump down because that's also on your driver's license. We typically measure pounds and 16 fluid ounces makes a pound. What about tons? We see big trucks, right? So 2,000 pounds, right, equals one ton. It's an equivalent weight, right? It's the same amount of mass, it's just a different unit. Just like that ruler that's 12 inches is one foot, the numbers are different because the units are different, but they're measuring the same length, okay? So these are called equalities. Okay. Now, if we look at volume, man, we're, we're, a lot of people don't know this. If you look, you know, I don't even have on here one cup is eight ounces, right? So how much is in a pint? Well, one pint is two cups. It's 16 ounces. And Guys, you know as well as I do, you ever go to the pub, they never fully give you 16 ounces in that pint glass. There's a lot of froth on top. It's more like 13, but I'm, that's besides the point. So basically one pint is two cups, right? Two pints make a quart. Now, a lot of people don't know, you used to, buying a quart of milk was really popular back in the days when I was a kid. But if you drank a lot of milk, like we did, four quarts make one gallon, right? And we used to have to draw the gallon man as kids too. You know, you'd, you have your gallon here, and then you have your, you know, your four quarts. And then in a quart, there's, you know, two pints, and then a pint. Uh, I won't keep drawing the gallon, man. I guess you get the idea. <laughs> but if you look at all of these measurements, the one thing that stands out is there's no consistency. They're all over the place. One to 12, one to three. No, wait, one to 5,280. One to eight, one to four. This one, a little easier. You can think four quarters in a dollar, four quarters, four quarts make a gallon, but still our system is all over the place. And in fact, that's part of the reason why so many people don't really know our system that well. So what is the international system? What do scientists and the majority of the world use? 
they don't use the English system or the imperial system. They use the metric system. And we're somewhat familiar with the metric system. When you look at the speedometer in your vehicle, it doesn't only say miles per hour, it says kilometers per hour, right? And thanks to, you know, soda pop, right? We get the two liter bottles now, right? So we're familiar with this and, and mass, you know, kilograms, right? And time again is consistent. The one thing that isn't on here is temperature, right? Here in the States, we use Fahrenheit. Uh, everywhere else pretty much is, uses Celsius. In the science, we use Kelvin, but there's another example. But the nice thing about the metric system is if I look at all of the equalities, they're all of a base 10. And that makes things, it doesn't matter if it's length, volume, or mass, that makes things a little bit easier. So we're going to use prefixes to help us determine whether we're going to increase the size or decrease the size of that particular measurement. So again, all of these are on factors of 10, base 10, which makes it really easy to put things in exponential notation. <clears throat> so the prefix basically doesn't tell you the type of measurement. It just tells you what base of 10, the numerical value, the placement value. <clears throat> so I can have a kilometer. So I could have a kilometer. So one kilo is a thousand meters. Another way of saying a thousand meters would could be 10 to the three meters. I'm just putting that in scientific notation, right? And it's 10 to the three because the three zeros makes it a power of three. You can think of it as 10 times 10 times 10. They're all to the first power. You add those exponents up, you get a three. But really, the, the key for this video is not so much how to do scientific notation or exponential notation, is to look at this prefix kilo. And I can use it not just for length, I can use it for mass. So now if I change the unit from meter to gram, the kilo prefix tells me still it's 10 to the 3. It's just now my measurement is in mass, so it's 10 to the 3 grams. That is very powerful and it's very useful. Why? It allows us to put things in scientific notation very easily. If we want to use decimal notation, it's just a question of moving the decimal over one, two, three, right? So if I have one kilo and I move the decimal over again, one, two, three, now I have a thousand units, that unit being either meters or grams. So here are the metric prefixes that are bigger <clears throat> than the standard unit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So your standard unit might be grams for mass, it might be meters for length, or it might be liters for volume. But if I'm using these prefixes, it's the same. So again, one kilometer, 10 to the three meters. One megagram, 10 to the 6. So 10 to the 6 is a million. Notice we're going up by threes, right? Giga, right? Back in the old days, you used to get a computer. You'd be lucky if you had three gigabytes. Now you can get external hard drives that are terabytes, right? So a giga, right? A gigameter is a billion, 10 to the 9. Terra, it's a trillion. Peta, it's a quadrillion. Then you have exa, zeta, and yota all going up by threes. For this class, we don't really focus on a lot of that. I mean, most people are pretty comfortable nowadays because of computers up to tera. In this class, you're primarily going to be using kilo. That is one I do want you to know, okay? Now on the smaller scale, this is a little bit a little more common in science. So the prefix deci, deci is a tenth. Another way I could have written this is one tenth. And the exponent, one over 10 to the one, if you follow your rules of exponents, to take it out of the 
denominator and move it to the numerator, I have to make it a negative exponent. So one deciliter is 10 to the negative liters. Now, ah, I don't like negative exponents. I'm weird. I'm trying to be positive. And, you know, it can be challenging, but I'm trying to be positive. I like this equality a lot better. It avoids the negative exponent. Now, neither, they're both equivalent, okay? So you could say one deciliter is one tenth of a liter or 10 to the negative one. But what I'd rather say is I know a liter is bigger. So the smaller amount is going to require more. So the deciliter, there's 10 deciliters in a liter. And that makes sense because in a decade, right? How many years are in a decade? 10. So then we go to one centi. It's one hundredths. One hundredths is one over 10 squared. Again, if I want that to be in the numerator, it's 10 to the negative two. Again, if you're like me and you want to try to be positive and avoid negative exponents, you might remember one meter, the meter is bigger than the centimeter, is 100 centimeters. Well, what could help you? How many years in a century? 100. Then we go to milli, right? One, one thousandths. I'm not going to keep doing the fractions. I think you guys get the point, right? One over 10 to the three, bring it up. But I like to discuss this. So one second is a thousand milliseconds. And you, you could even write that out if you, you know, you just write a thousand milliseconds. And why? Well, hello, millennials. Right? We just had a millennium. That's with an E. We just had our second millennium. That's when you came of age. That's why you're called that. In the year 2000, millennials came of age, right? You became adults. So we had our second millennial. Millennium means a thousand, right? Or in Spanish, un mil is a thousand. Now, after these three, we do what we did with the larger prefixes, and now we go by three. So we no longer just have 10 to the three, now we go to 10 to the six, 10 to the nine, 10 to the 12, 10 to the 15. And these are useful. We see in science, we do this all the time, right? So micro, right? Microbiologist, right? What are we doing? Now we're to the, not thousandths, millionths. And it's got this funny, you know, a little Greek letter called mu. It looks like a U that's, you know, really nice cursive. As you can see, my writing is chicken scratch and I apologize, but it's useful. And then you have the nano. It's, you know, not a millionth, it's a billionth. And then pico, a trillionth, femto, a uh, qu quadrillionth. And when you get down to the size of atoms, you're talking in that region right there. Subatomic particles are in femto, uh, atoms are in pico and angstroms. So anyways, these are the prefixes. I hope that helps you uh, understand how we're gonna be incorporating these. And we're gonna actually be using these as conversion factors to help solve problems within our system, the imperial system within the metric system, but more importantly, we're gonna use these equalities to work between both systems. And again, that's part of the challenge and excitement of chemistry, is we're gonna be able to do both. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, if you have any questions, post them on the discussion boards, leave a comment or email me. Thanks for tuning in.